This episode is brought to you by Wanted. Wanted is a career platform from Korea with over 10,000 companies and 2 million plus users using the platform for talent recruitment and career growth. Since 2015, Wanted's mission has been to bring fulfillment and happiness to all professionals around the world, offering the best job opportunities and best in class career content to support professional learning and growth. Adding on to the growth and innovation, Wanted introduces to you Brownup. Brownup is a video interview collaboration tool for every team. With a simple download of the Chrome browser extension, Roundup invites you and your team to host hiring interviews on Google Meet, share interview evaluations, then round up all interviewer comments in a single dashboard, all to help your team efficiently reach the best hiring decision. It is currently free and available on www.roundup.ai. Hi, I'm Adrian Tan, and this is my podcast where I deep dive into matters surrounding HR tech and the future of work. I was a former HR serial entrepreneur and write extensively about the future of work on my blog. You may know me better through the Singapore HR tech market map that I created in 2017. In this podcast, I speak with the people who are enabling the future of work. From mindfulness coach to employee engagement platform, they are all helping companies to better navigate rising work and business demands. I'm hoping that sharing in this podcast will help you better prepare yourself and your business for what the future of work may bring. Hi, Jin. Thank you for coming on to the show. Hi, Adrian. Thank you for having me. To start with, could you help the audience to understand a bit of your background, the chain of events that led you into Swingbee, and what is the problem you're trying to solve? This is Jin, co-founder and CEO of Swingbee. So Swingbee is a modern HR platform and HR software for small and medium-sized companies and medium-sized businesses. And before we started uh, Swingbee, I was in charge of South Asia market and uh, I was working with a lot of small and medium-sized companies and businesses. And I found one of the common pattern of the problem or headache of running business, especially for small and medium-sized companies, where they didn't have the full big HR team. And also, there was no proper tool that they can run by itself, by themselves. So there was a like, gap and discrepancy for small companies, how they're going to maintain uh, their HR with their compliance. So they're relying on uh, our HR officers and companies. And when they go bigger, like mid-size, one of the pain points they have is they start to have different teams and employee data is scattered and, and dispersed in many different teams. So there's one consolidated team who has all the employee data. But we found there's no right tool or right place or right team who has a full control of this. So that's the reason we saw this is a huge problem to solve. So we started this platform. One of the other reasons why I could empathize this problem is uh, Swingbee is actually my third startup. When I look back my first and second startup, I, I could feel it that this is a like, very common problem of most of small and mid-sized companies. companies. So that's how we uh, decided to do this business. And what were you doing in your first two startups? The first one was real estate matching platform. I majored in architecture engineering, but we totally failed. I, I totally failed. We launched the real estate matching platform, like mobile app, but I had no idea how to handle and work with real estate agencies. And then uh, the second one was tutor matching platform. It grew really well. But the thing is, when, when we got an offer of acquisition, we just decided to let it go. Firstly, tutor matching platform was not the very attractive idea that I wanted to do. So I need to admit that my heart wasn't there. Problem that you mentioned in your first two startups, which is also something common among SME, why, why do you think there seems to be this common denominator where companies are just uh, reluctant or unable to put their, put their source up in, in this HR aspect? When I ran first and second business and startups, one of the very annoying problem for me was all this labor law and compliance. We know it's mandatory and it's inevitable, but there was no like right person to do that because when we have like small team, then we always hire the core roles first, like R and D or sales, rather than all other roles. So I had to do it by myself, and I started to work with external 
expert. When I did by myself, it was like really, really inefficient. And when I start to rely on external expert, they are not our internal team members. So uh, there is a lot of back and forth process. So when I realized a lot of like small and business businesses in our region are having the same problem, like uh, I saw one of our early customers, they were having those process, applying leave should be done by paper. And it didn't make sense for me. Come on, this is 21st century. When I saw this, this problem came bigger than any other problem for me. So they were still very much using a very primitive way to manage the HR processes. But the digitalization of all these processes has been around for some time. But it's something that companies are still very reluctant to get into. Do you see certain friction or is it more of a product issue or a mindset issue? I like to say like this, to make a real transformation, like digital transformation, the product should give the real clear value props rather than hiring more people. I think the first reason why we couldn't have the real shift in our market or our era is because the product that we've seen couldn't give a like a really huge and attractive value props than doing by myself or relying on external experts. In that perspective, I think the recent and modern tools are giving very clear value props like employer or HR managers to do it by themselves. And secondly, is it always comes to cost. And when we have like GDP per capita is low, then we realize that hiring people is affordable. But when GDP per capita is growing and growing, then market is smart. So that's why the more we grow, the more our economies grow, then uh, we realize that relying on software makes more sense. So the, the current proficiency of software in the example of Swing V definitely helps to encourage more companies to look at all this stuff. And I've seen a few cases where companies may be using digital platform, but they are, might be behind a firewall. They are not exactly on your mobile phone, which led to a lot of other issues. And with, with the current situation where every company is out there doing remote work, has that somehow accelerated or force them to look into such solutions? Oh, yeah, definitely. Swingvee is SaaS company. Uh, I like to say we are running mobile and cloud-based. And the benefits of using all this cloud or mobile-based software rather than installation-based old-fashioned way is when we need to work in different places. After this COVID situation, COVID outbreak, then a lot of businesses had to implement like different work environments or workstation, especially like work from home. It can be hybrid or full remote working sometimes. I believe this kind of new modern tools are going to give more advantage and benefit to our potential customers. Your experience in your first and second startup naturally made you a very good target audience sample size for who you're trying to reach out to. How has that experience been for you? And how has that led to the way you are managing differently? When we look back on our time during the COVID outbreak, it was chaotic and painful. We have presence in four different countries, Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Korea. We don't have like time zone issue, like a distributed team in the US or Europe or other region. But of course, having four different locations brought many unexpected chaos, especially during the COVID season. When COVID outbreak came out, the first thing that which makes us really hard and tough was we had a different times and dates of nationwide lockdown. It didn't happen uh, at the same time. So when one country started the nationwide lockdown, the rest looks fine. And when that nationwide end, and ended in Malaysia, then suddenly other countries started to have like another crisis. We felt like we're passing through the minefield. We don't know when and how it will explode. It was a good lesson that we need to grow ourselves about operating this remote team better. It gave us the new idea of the product for ourselves. What what kind of product did it lead you guys to look into? Before COVID, our strategy is to go deeper. So we were very selective of the product that we're going to offer to our customer, like payroll, leave, uh, benefit, or claim. But we didn't 
provide timing attendance before COVID. We believe there are different players in the market which can provide time and attendance feature to our potential customers. After COVID, we tried to explore some of the time and attendance tool out there, and then we realized there is no perfect tool that meet with our requirement or expectation. So we decided to develop time and attendance by ourselves to give like mobile and like mobile-based clock in and out and those geofencing, like GPS-based clock in and out setting, and also seamless integration with other tools like Leaf or Payroll. So something positive actually came out from this COVID-19 for you guys. Uh, earlier on, you mentioned a lot of mistakes were being made, and I would imagine most of this would be process-driven, and some of them may be, even be people management-driven. Are there some of them you can talk about, and most importantly, how do you go about resolving them? Yeah, working remotely was not a new thing for us. But the, the thing was, before COVID, we were having office-based culture. We have office in four different countries. And those team members were working in the office with their local team members. When it comes to how we work in our daily lives, it's quite similar to those, those other companies out there. But after COVID, then we, we had to move to hybrid structure, work from home and also office. We realized that we, we need to change all the process or policies or how we work, especially for culture too. So the first thing that we've done is, okay, we need to clearly give a guideline to the team. What is the policy that we're going to apply during and after COVID season? I'd like to just highlight three things that was really crucial for us. So the first lesson was embrace asynchronous communication. Asynchronous communication is not a new thing. When we work through the email, it's inevitable. But when we apply work from home in the company, then this asynchronous communication is more than 50%. So when we uh, send a message through like company messenger, like Slack, or uh, when we use more of emails, then we need to embrace and encourage people uh, about understanding all this time cost and how should we communicate uh, in this era. So that was the first thing that we officially give a full detailed guideline of the communication. The second thing is set a clear and actionable deadlines. Because when we start to apply work from home as a norm, then is I think it's a human nature that some people have a kind of concern or anxiety about whether we are working our best or whether we are working really well or not. Uh, and sometimes we just started to imagine what if there is some problem incident, how we can sense it. And the best way to solve or get over this concern and anxiety would be setting clear and actionable deadlines. We're not going to do micromanagement and it's not possible anyway. So we're going to maintain those empowerment in our culture even after COVID. So what we're going to highlight is we're always going to show actionable deadlines And this deadline is going to be public, so anyone in the company can see. And the third one is we need to award and honor people's work more compared to those times that we we work in the office. Because in the office, there is a lot of small talk. So we can give compliments or we can praise some people within the team. But when we work remote, it's not easy to realize the achievement or contribution. So... Leaders or managements really need to review regularly what can we praise or give a compliment or award people's work. As a summary, embrace asynchronous communication, setting a clear, actionable deadlines, and third, awarding and honoring people's work was the biggest lesson that we learned. The last item that you mentioned, paying attention to what they are doing. Even in a physical setting, I would imagine most people already have so many work on their hands. Uh, let alone paying attention on what other people is doing. In a remote setting, it's even worse. You don't really get to see them. So you have to bring that extra effort to pay attention to know what is going on. Is this something that your people have to or be reminded on a constant basis? It's a part of the very first lesson. And I believe that's the most important thing that we need to break down. So the first uh, lesson that we learned is embrace asynchronous communication because asynchronous communication is going to be bigger than, than the normal like face-to-face offline communication. When we implement 
work from home or remote working. The guideline for this can be different by company, but not just giving the guideline, but also we are keep providing a training to our managers and also team members. How should we communicate? Because as you said, if we don't train our people or we, if you're not aligned, how are we going to work in during this remote working, then it's going to give unnecessary misunderstanding each other and it can make people emotional. If someone is keep turning off the video or keep joining the call in a noisy area, then it's, it, it can cause unnecessary emotion to other colleagues. We give very clear guidelines to the team and also we keep reminding to the team members why we need to understand and follow this kind of guide altogether. I understand that you guys are still hiring. How different has the hiring process been for you? We always arrange like face-to-face -face interviews and now most companies are doing interviews through online. Implementing and using right tools to supercharge our online recruiting process is a must. Then we can ask this question, why we need to hire local people only? And of course, it drives us to the one answer. Now we can open the role in every part of the world. Of course, we can be more strategic. If we open sales role or product manager role in every part of the world, then we need to consider different types of uh, recruiting channels or recruiting platform. So it can be knowing to manage all different tools. So we can be strategic to choose a specific region or we can limit some like some time zone. But still we like a lot of companies if they they decided to implement remote working as one of their default work environment or working policy or working protocol. But recruiting should follow that trend too. So all talents around the world can be our potential talent pool. So that's the biggest change. And in our case, we are on the way to grow. So the first thing we've done is open the role outside. And then we've worked with one remote worker, one remote team member, and it was quite painful. He was based in Netherlands. And actually, this team case was before COVID. But before COVID, we were still exploring this remote team first. And all this time zone is quite tough to work because we were not fully ready as work as a full remote team at the time. So now these days we are doing this. If we want to open outside of our local offices, then we're going to limit two hours of time zone. Maybe future we're going to open everywhere without any time zone limitation. But right now we open to those countries which has two hours, like two hours gap. What would significantly happen if it goes beyond the two hours, wouldn't the asynchronous communication take care of this aspect despite time difference that you're talking about? I think it's, it's all about the balance. When we are focused on asynchronous communication, the biggest cause that we need to consider is time. So time cost is something we're going to spend when we work remotely. It's all about how much we want to spend. If asynchronous communication takes, okay, we have a kind of, kind of, culture that we do not expect to get the answer of my quick question on Slack or other messenger minutes or one hour. But if that asynchronous communication started to have a kind of mindset that is going to take one day when I ask one question, then the cost is getting too high. It's the experience that we, we had. And right now we have this. Okay, we don't, since we cannot have offline meeting that often, we communicate remotely. And then let's try to keep like time cost around 30 minutes to one hour to get the answer. That's the cost that we feel comfortable within our team in, at Swingby. I've never really considered about the time cost aspect, but it does really make a lot of sense, especially the kind of turnaround you can provide, not just internally, but potentially also across to your customer. L lastly, I just want to touch on something that uh, you guys came up with. It's a 34 pages ebook, which mm -hmm. mentioned about the state of employee benefits in Singapore, the most value benefits, so on and so forth. Uh, even though this report came out in 2020, I just want to understand a bit more about it and that things changed since the results might be similar because the reason why we had this survey and uh, made this ebook, the state of employee benefit, is to understand what was the change before and after COVID. And we wanted to give some kind of insights 
to these small and medium-sized businesses and employers or management. We realize there's a big change. Top benefit considerations. And the first benefit they expect is flexible working hours or working from home. And it is quite shocking for employee perspective because it never came out on the top. There was no like work from home in the least at all before like COVID. And now it's number one consideration, which is higher than incentive bonus or company shares. That is most important lesson to our to our like clients, employers, and also management of the company. That is a kind of new trend that a lot of uh, potential employees are expecting. For people who is interested to find out more about SwingV, where can they go to? Just visit swingv.com. We give all the information and we don't put a uh, like complicated process at all. So our customer potential customers can see uh, all the information they need. Thank you so much, Zin, for your time today. Really lovely speaking with you, and I wish you all the best and continued success in your journey with SwingV. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the podcast. You can refer to the show notes for links to more information about our guests and their businesses. If you enjoyed this podcast, it would be helpful to give a review on iTunes or follow me on Spotify. If you're using Overcast, please hit the star button under the episode. That will help get this episode and podcast out to more people who may find it useful. I'll see you in the next episode of The Agent Han Show.